Hey everyone, um, just want to give you guys the usual uh, Monday update and uh, you know talk about a few things uh, that's happened in the week and talk about uh, the upcoming week. So uh, last week they, uh, I guess last week was the first week that they started uh, slowly opening up uh, all the businesses here in uh, in Winnipeg and I guess Manitoba and so far so good haven't heard about uh, i think there was uh, three new cases yesterday or something like that but uh very minimal so that looks promising uh it looks worldwide that you know people are starting to uh ease up on the the restrictions and the wheels are in motion to uh start getting you know everything to the back back to way they uh, things were I see in the UK that, you know, they're opening up gyms, they're opening up actually everything, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, so it does look like there's this kind of push to start, uh, you know, trying to get things back to normal. I think, you know, people are starting to realize that, uh, you know, you can't keep everything closed forever. Um, and to keep everything closed until there's a vaccine is unrealistic. Um and um, and I and I and I started to see more reports about you know they're wanting everyone to stay inside and quarantine and blah blah blah. But I see a lot of reports of all this staying inside and uh, uh, not doing anything and and stuff like that is actually bad for your immune system because you're not dealing with any kind of bugs or anything like that. So they're saying that you know what once people start going out and that from all this quarantine that their immune systems won't be functioning you know as good as they were because they weren't exposed to all these little bugs and. Uh, bacteria and stuff like that so um, you know I was thinking you know I don't, I don't, I'm not 100% sure on this either but they said a lot of even in New York they said you know a lot of the people you know got sick that actually were you know uh, you know were, were in their places lots and quarantining and stuff like that so I don't know you know you can quarantine all you want but you know you're stuck in your house and you're not seeing anyone or anything like that but guess what you are still going to the grocery store you're still going out for these little things and so forth right so um so it does look like um, uh, they, uh, things are getting back to normal. I know we, I, I am, uh, you know, I'm obviously still doing my workouts at home, which have been pretty good. Um, but also now this, it's getting nicer outside, definitely keeping up with the walks. Um, they're showing that the vitamin D is very important, right, for the, the, for the immune system. So I believe that, you know, getting that sunlight is good for you. And I believe getting that fresh air is good for you. I believe getting that exercise is good for you. And I also believe getting outside and being uh, exposed to the elements, so to speak, uh, like bacteria and all this kind of stuff is good for you as well, uh, for your immune system. So I believe you should get outside, make sure your skin is exposed to the sun. Like I, I try not to wear a hat or anything like that, even though it's not, it's been kind of cool and stuff like that. I still want to get that, uh, exposure to the sun to get that vitamin D, right? So I believe that it's important to try to uh get outside even if it's just like an hour or a half an hour like you know go for a brisk walk a day uh that would be you know really good for most and just even for the mental not even the physical the mental so we got the physical of you know if you go for a 45 minute or hour walk a day that's that'll be really good for your you know health like your your physical health i think it's very good for your mental health just to get out of the house and not being cooped up in that and then also you know the vitamin d and also the for the exposure for your immunity so I believe that's important instead of just staying, you know, locked down and, you know, in your little bubble. I don't think that's really good at all for anything, not your physical, not your mental, not your immune system. So uh, uh, that looks good. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully Manitoba follows. Hopefully there's no major outbreaks and we'll see what happens in phase two. And then hopefully, you know, if we keep our fingers crossed, uh, gyms will be back open in uh, phase three and hopefully July uh, back to you know somewhat normal it'll be interesting to see once again what kind of restrictions there is and what they're going to try to do because like I said previously you know if they try to regulate things too much like even with the restaurants and that uh, the gyms will never be able to stay open uh, and I've heard and as you know because I keep keeping I uh, keep in contact or I keep uh, you know checking on what's happening in states with gyms and stuff like that and of course you know I think a couple of the big chains already filed for bankruptcy I think it was golds or world gym whatever one of the two and like some kind of like other huge chain and then i heard just from you know people talking that a lot of a lot of smaller gyms um you know independently owned gyms and that were closing down they had no plans to open back up so that's not good right you know i know people they were like oh yeah let's close everything let's close everything but i don't think people are really uh you know uh, really you know really had 
and foresight to see into the fallout to all this because now you got another problem here so even like you know me as you know hopefully i was planning on opening my own gym or whatever the case may be like that was on my radar before all this happened like i was like actively looking for a place right and now you know, it, it could be, you know, after all this, it could be a, a good time to, you know, get into it because there will probably be, you know, things going out or whatever. I'll probably be able to get equipment. But, and I'm not speaking just for myself, but I'm speaking for any business now. Who who in their right mind or what, who's going to want to open a business or put their, their, put everything on the line? You know, do I want to put everything on the line for just to know that if we have an outbreak in, uh, an outbreak in, in, uh, in a month, that they can close it, close us down again. You know, who's going to want to take that risk? So I think they've, you know, and a lot of people are talking about that. They're saying, okay, so all these places, like a lot of these, they're saying all oh, the big corporations, yeah, they'll survive. This is, this is who this is going to kill is the small business owner, right? The big corporations will get by this and whatever. And but what are they going to do? They're take out all these mom and pop restaurants or these stores or whatever, right? So now you're looking at a situation that, when someone does try to get on business or like who's going to want to get these, you know, brick and mortar offline businesses set up when the government can come and close you down at any given time over a, a virus or something. Right. And I don't know it'd be pretty interesting if I had my own place right now, what the, you know, what my mindset would be. I kind of know what I would be, you know, what my position would be on all this, but, um, you know, for them to come in and do that, that's a tough one. You know, I seen they jailed that person that what was it, a salon owner in Texas or whatever, I believe they jailed her for, you know, going into work and, you know, said she had bills to pay. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know what, how, like, you know, how do you, how are you going to approach the government or what their thing is going to be? You know, do I want to go and put my, you know, all my savings and dump in, you know, tens or like thousands and thousands of dollars into a new nice new gym? That knowing that if we have an, 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 a second wave or an outbreak or some other new virus comes out or some kind of, you know, do in, in like you say next year, they can close me down for six months because it's deemed unsafe. You know, who's going to do that? And that's the, pro that's the problem that I think that they're, they're going to have to address that because who, I don't know, I, don't, I think a lot of people won't. And I, you know, even look online now, like, because I do, you know, I'm, I'm keeping up with that. You see, like, there's a huge push, like everyone's going online with a bunch of stuff now, right? There's so many new things popping up. If, you, if you're on Facebook and that, you look at your feed, all you're seeing is advertisements. So the online thing has gone crazy because most a lot of people are realizing that a lot of these businesses are going to go online. Like as opposed to me, you know, opening up a gym, you know, go with the online training, right? There's, you know, your, your overhead's nothing. You're you're not paying for, you know, a gym space or a lease. The government can't come shut you down, right? So, um, so yeah, so there's just a lot of things going forward that are going to be, you know, interesting, not only for me, but, you know, businesses in general, restaurants or, you know, anything else. And I see, like I said, I seen earlier that the restaurants were back, uh, the restaurants were back on, uh, you know, opening at 50% capacity or patio or patios at 50% capacity, which, you know, I've seen a lot of people didn't even open because, you know, what is that? It's not, a, it's not even, you know, sure, it sounds good for the public and all that stuff. But as a restaurant owner, I know a lot of people didn't even bother with that. Who's going to? What am I going to fire up my grill and get all the staff back in for, you know, a few people it's a, and order a bunch of food in? Probably all their, everything was, you know, they had to order a bunch of food in. You have to call some staff in. You have to fire up all the grills and that. Is it even, even worth it? Obviously, they didn't make any, they probably didn't make anything. It wasn't even worth the, it wasn't even worth it. So sure, it looks good all in, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, they're open. Patios are open, slowly opening up. But from a restaurant owner's point of view, how would that even be worth it? Right, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. If I had a restaurant, I wouldn't open it up. I'd be like, "Well, what's, what's even the point?" Right, I have a few people sitting on my patio. That's not doing anything. So, um, yeah, and then same with the gyms. Right, what's going to happen? I don't know, but they're talking. Like I said, you know, booking in your times. You know, having these restrictions on how long you can be in there. Having restrictions on like how many people are going to be in there. Like it is. You know, I can't see. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of solution they're going to try to have with that. But I just, uh, I can't see any of that stuff flying at all or being, uh, you know, gyms will never make unless you're charging like 500 bucks a month a person, right? Which no one's going to do. It's going to, you know, is it going to be a situation where only, you know, the wealthy are going to be able to afford the gym, right? Because that's what you're going to have to do. 
if you're good to for a, a, a gym to be feasible or to be able to stay open, uh, whether it be a city gym or whether it be someone privately owned, what are you going to charge a person twenty grand a year, right? And just go off of that and hire and get maybe in and just do peak, uh, you know? Because if you're going to have a limitation on how many people like that and be so stringent, then now you're in a position where uh, you're going to have to cut down on the volume. But you're going to have to, you know, obviously, if you don't have more, more uh, volume, you're going to make it more expensive. That's just the way it goes. Right? So before, gym memberships were relatively cheap. But they would pack as many people in during peak times, and it was fine. But now they're going to do all these regulations and stuff like that. And same with restaurants. You know, and what about bars and all just all that kind of stuff. I don't know. You know, you know, I'm just going to speak from a gym point of view, but that's what they're going to have to do. Either it's going to be highly specialized. And you're gonna just, you know, only the wealthy will be able to afford it, and pay their whatever thousand bucks a month or whatever five hundred bucks. I don't know. I'm just pulling numbers out here, but it's never the business model will never be able to keep as it is, and the same rates will never be able to keep as it is, if they're gonna have all these restrictions, right? Like I like I said, well, you they have a ten person limit in the gym, and you will show up the gym. Oh, sorry, buddy, you gotta wait here, wait here, wait here in line with the rest of the people until. This gym clears out because we have too many people in there. Like, who's going to do that? People just won't, right? So it might be get to a place where, you know, a private person will just have to open and you book in your spots like a hairdresser or anything like that. Then you charge whatever you're going to go there. Now you're going to be positioning that you're going to have to, you know, the, the rates will def would definitely have to kind of go up, right? And you'd have to, th that's just the way I'm seeing it, right? I, I don't know. I'm just talking out loud here, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, what they do with all this, like I said, you know, from the, everything's like, yeah, let's just open at 50%, 50% with all these restrictions and that, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't really see how that's, you know, I don't think it's really benefiting the business businesses that much, you know, as opposed to more just for the public and trying to get something so that people aren't going all, you know, crazy and, you know, cause as it is, I think people, a lot of people already are getting, you know, fed up with everything and I think, as the as the weather starts getting nicer now, because even you're driving around that, you see people now are just like whatever, right? I don't, you don't uh, see so anything. Anyways, I believe you know my position is that you know if you look at the statistics and that it is mostly affecting older people. And then I, I just seen a, a crazy statistic the other day that the actual you know it's it's dangerous for older people. I get that, but the, if you get the actual age of the people that are uh, uh, dying from the COVID or whatever their age is actually higher, like the average age of that is actually higher than a per than the life expectancy of a person. So, you know, it's obviously unfortunate, but, you know, the, if that's the case, then, well, you know, you're, sh you're kind of shutting down the economy, every shutting down everything for that. Like, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I get that. If you're older, if you're immune compromised and all that, yeah, sure, stay at home, keep keep those people safe. Yeah, I 100% I agree with that because, yeah, it is very dangerous for that. But, you know, at some point, I still believe that things do have to get back to normal. I believe they have to get back to normal pretty soon, um, you know, for, for a lot of reasons, not just, you know, just everything, right? Unless everything, you want everything to collapse or wait for this, uh, like I said, they want to wait for this vaccine and that, that, who knows? There might not be a vaccine for 10 years. They don't have a vaccine for HIV. They don't have a, a vaccine for herpes. They don't have a vaccine for, uh, you know, I think SARS or whatever. And those things have been around forever. So what makes you think there's going to be a vaccine for this anytime soon? It's just going to be have to, <clears throat> have to be one of these things you live with and I guess see where it goes. But I don't believe keeping everyone in. Well, it's just not, it's just, you know, a lot of, on a lot of levels, it's just not, I don't think it's, you just can't do it. So anyways, that's it. Uh, so try to keep up with your diet, keep up with your activity, keep up with that. And then hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, this next month and everything like that, everything gets a little more stable and we get a lot more information and then hopefully we're back, back to the way things were for the most part. Anyway, see you later.